uh, till the last class we have discussed about the uh, reaction rates. We started with that seven steps. We started with adsorption, desorption, surface reaction. That is the pure reaction rate without any mass transfer and heat transfer coming into picture. Then we have taken interfacial gradients and intrafacial gradients and then finally, now we have a rate expression. So, if I go back to my original uh, diagram which I have been drawing all the time that is yeah, kinetics all that will come there. So, here we have input, output, kinetics, contacting, here we have chemical physical batch continuous and again we have P F M F all ideal contacting. Then the performance equation equation output as a function of input contact in kinetics sorry kinetics and contacting yeah this equation also you have seen what we have done was this one thoroughly entirely for the heterogeneous catalytic reaction so here we have kinetics, I mean anyway for uh, design, finally you need the input which all of us know how to find out, kinetics which will give you minus R A and then contacting what kind of reactor you are going to take. And fortunately for us in a continuous system we have only two, most of the processes are only continuous and then that is why these two reactors one of them you should choose and uh, contacting will give me type of reactor, kinetics will give me the rate and that rate only thoroughly we have done using chemical and physical uh, aspects. Chemical aspects is the intrinsic rate what you have derived for uh, using uh, langmuir Inshulwood kinetics okay? that is minus R A. Of course, even though we, all the time we will say it is only first order reaction, but it can be any order or there is no order at all for most of the reactions. So, this entire thing will give me minus R. Okay? So, now if I take for example, a packet bed reactor where it is a plug flow reactor, then the equation for designing packet bed is this in terms of W, where W equal to weight of the catalyst 0 to x A d x A by minus R A. Okay? This entire expression is due to the contacting pattern right? and in this expression I have minus R A kinetics and in this expression I have input the F A naught. Okay, good. So, this is what now we are trying to go to uh, we are trying to do uh, now uh, next few classes that means, we would like to have uh, yeah we have to design using this information the packet bed reactors or fixed bed reactors right. Packet bed reactor or fixed bed reactor I do not know which one you like you like packet bed reactor or fixed bed reactor which has got more, more meaning packed huh? Why? Catalytic reactor design. Yeah, why do you say packet bed? Packet bed is better than fixed bed. Just like that. Huh? Is there any meaning for packet bed and fixed bed? Yeah, packet bed. Can move. Yeah, I think more correctly if you say fixed bed is the correct one because bed is fixed. Bed is fixed at least between two two plates distributors. Otherwise, it can fluidize, and the entire bed also packed bed also can move. Right, entire packed bed can go up. That's what what we call moving bed. Then it's called entire bed. So fixed bed is the correct word, even though many times we say packed bed, packed bed, packed bed. Okay, good. So, now for the design of this, 
you can go to any level whatever you want okay i will just describe one i think now nowadays one of the new subjects are the future of chemical engineering people say i also believe that is multi scale chemical engineering multi scale right so multi scale means you have to start from the smallest maybe from nano or less than nano to to the uh, almost uh, to the planet level and planet level so that means almost chemical engineers are associated with molecular level to planet level so i can give you the example for example taking a catalytic reactor packet bed reactor itself what is the starting point for us starting point for us the chemical reaction which occurs at molecular level if it is a catalytic reaction then you will have a catalyst that catalyst you have to prepare how do you prepare catalyst again various techniques we have discussed maybe crystallization one of the techniques and if you take one specific example like zeolite zeolites can be made beautifully through chemical reactions whatever structure you want you can get it depending on what kind of reaction you are going to conduct that means you can control the structure of pores using zeolite catalyst for many other catalysts still it is not possible to have that kind of structure okay so then if i have a particular structure known to me and also my molecular size my molecule size known to me these two so i will take a zeolite catalyst with some pores zeolite crystals for example it's not even a pellet zeolite crystal i have to make first these crystals have the holes the pores so that pore naturally should be slightly larger than the pores i mean uh, larger than the catalyst uh, sorry uh, the molecular size okay now what happens if you are theoretically if you want to theoretically find out how many molecules are getting diffused you have to go to quantum mechanics level because these molecules are driven by thermal forces at a molecular level and uh, uh, because of these thermal fo uh, forces the molecules will vibrate translate and rotate right so for example you have to find out the speed of these molecules how they are going and entering through the pores if you want to calculate the rotational speed okay then you have to use the schrodinger equation to find out or even just before that if you temporarily assume that there is no catalyst there then you have the kinetic theory of gases and at room temperature you know that but but stuart lightfoot also has given this uh, value i think uh, you can calculate also that 200 meters per second at room temperature the molecules can move according to kinetic theory of gases they, they are moving in this room also with that same speed what only thing is we are not able to see okay but when you are having more and more molecules that means dense gases then what happens this free flight you see at what level we are discussing the free flight of individual molecules are restricted because there are many yeah obstruction because other molecules are there it is like i don't know whether you have experienced this i have also not gone long like 20 years back i have gone now it must be worse there is a street in chennai called ranganathan street ranganathan street or ranganathan street ah have you gone to prabhu you would have gone okay that is what is highly dense packed packing okay you cannot move you have to make really effort to go through that packing so when you have that kind of so many molecules very close the free flight of this uh, i mean individual molecules will simply become the phenomena of diffusion otherwise that's why kinetic theory of gases is for more number i mean uh, the less number of molecules per unit volume the dilute gases for example if you go to very very dense gases then the free flight of the movement of the individual molecules will become diffusion that means it has to fight to diffuse through the other molecules okay that means diffusivity coefficient will automatically come there and schrodinger equation will automatically come there because you should find out the orientation of the molecules that means rotation and all that so that the molecule should properly orient to go into the pores otherwise the molecules particularly when you are talking about our uh, catalytic cracking then you have the long chain molecules long chain molecules when they are moving in this direction they may not enter chain is in this direction so they have to rotate in this direction and then try to enter through the pores 
that is why in zeolites most of the time i have told you uh, you know three types of diffusion right what are those notson diffusion bulk diffusion and configurational diffusion and the speciality of configurational diffusion is that the molecule is always in touch with the surface of the catalyst and whereas the bulk diffusion it may not be even seeing the catalyst surface that means the pore wall whereas notson diffusion notson diffusion what is the size of the pore for uh, uh, notson diffusion less than the molecule no we have talked this about in mean free pore yeah if mean if the pore diameter is almost around 5 times the mean free path of the molecules in kinetic theory of gases then you will have the notson diffusion but our idea should be to go for configurational diffusion why because each and every molecule should easily see the wall because the reaction is happening on the wall so when the reaction when the molecule goes and gets adsorbed there is surface coordination between the molecule and then the surface then because of the energies involved bond energies some of the bonds will be loosened okay they are broken then the molecules will form other molecules will form you see all this is at molecular level and we never bother to know all this 50 years back because what is that i want there i have a catalyst send the gases analyze the gas find out how much is converted but now because of the efficiency you know to improve the efficiency this level also people are thinking that is one scale nano scale right so sorry i think even less than nano scale around, around nano scale only all the phenomena what i have described so now you have the pore and uh, through the schrodinger's equation and also kinetic theory of gases you can try to find out now how the molecules oriented and then trying to diffuse into the pore so now diffusion automatically comes there because either configurational or notson or bulk because most of the time we would like to be configurational diffusion because surface area should be always in touch with the molecules or vice versa right so after that then these catalysts uh, crystals zeolite crystals you make them as because crystals as it is i cannot use in the reactor you have to make them as pellets okay so now these pellets may be of 3 mm diameter or 4 mm diameter 5 mm diameter right so when they are making this one as 4 5 mm diameter then uh, the diffusivity will come automatically into picture so that means you know thiele modulus right so that means what is the total surface area now i know how to calculate at individual molecular molecules level and then pores of individual crystals now all those crystals came together as a particle right now now i have to say that yes now what is the diffusion that is going through this and there is a beautiful definition which i have uh, i think it did not occur to me at that time to tell you the uh, bigger the particle you will have more time for diffusion right i mean it takes more time for diffusion and that's why there are two times involved diffusion time and reaction time which one should be large and which one should be small you have two times diffusion time for the molecules to diffuse through the particles and reaction time for the reaction to happen which one should be smaller diffusion time is to be constant yeah if you are able to make diffusion time much much smaller than the reaction time that means all the surface area is already used i mean it is being used by the molecules so now that is the thing the in fact the ratio between uh, the ratio between diffusion time and the reaction time is nothing but square of thiele modulus i will just explain diffusion time i think i will write here diffusion time tau d is r square by d where d is the diffusivity r square is the radius of the crystal okay when it is diffusing through okay r at the particle right okay and tau r reaction time for first order it is very easy to remember how do i find out tau r for first order reaction time i am not talking about integral uh, ct and all that what are the units of k time inverse so that is an indication of first order reactions 
this is the time. This is seconds, here also I have seconds because this is meter square per second, meter square there. So, the ratio between these two, tell me is it uh, Thiele modulus, tau d by tau r x, yeah phi square, phi square, that is a beautiful definition again. This did not occur to me when I was discussing earlier. Okay. So, this is a wonderful uh, that means, you should always try to have you know always effectiveness factor 1 means, the phi should be as small as possible. Okay. Good, that is nice. So, that, that is the level what you are talking and then now you take the particles and let us say 5 mm particles. So, is it important whether to have 5 mm particles or 10 mm particles or 20 mm particles? Is it really important to know what is the size? Why? Diffusion time, because that means there is an some optimal particle size. That is as far as the reaction is concerned. There is another thing also, again particle size that comes when I am now talking about the reactor, because we have the molecules, crystals, particles. Now, you come to these particles are put in the reactor level, in the packet bed reactor. So, when you are putting in the packed bed reactor, what is the use of particle size? I mean, will, it, will you use that in a calculating any other parameters for reactor size? Pressure drop, Ergun's equation. So, if it is too small, pressure drop will be very large. Okay? If it is too large, then diffusion time is large. So, somewhere you have that optimum that is coming at reactor level. right? So, once you have the reactor designed properly, this reactor is kept in the plant level. Correct, no? You do not have only reactor alone, even though that is my dream that you know only reactor, dream, dream reactor, okay? dream flow chart, where you have only reactor, nothing else. That can happen only when you have reaction at room temperature, 100 percent pure uh, reactants, 100 percent conversion, atmospheric pressure, all the reaction is happening. Then whatever you have is pure reactants coming into the reactor and then pure products coming out straight away. Yeah storage tank to supermarket. Straight away you are sending the material the, to, to the supermarket, then they can open the tap and sell <laughs> and sell to you. Wonderful, wonderful if, if, if that is really possible, but currently that is not possible. So, you have the reactor along with the reactor, you have so many other equipment that is plant. And if you see the molecular level is nano level okay, and then particle level is uh, micro level. Okay. And then uh, the size of uh, reactor and then plant is at macro level, plant also you are thinking. No? Then definitely we know that chemical engineers are the main people to pollute the atmosphere in many cases. Okay? So, that means the uh, waste gases from the plant going to the atmosphere. Now, you have to model the atmosphere to understand how the dispersion of pollutants, you see no? molecule to plant level, but fortunately all the all the gases are only not able to leave the uh, planet, but it is only within the atmosphere of the planet. If that is also throwing away material to outside uh, to some other planets, then it will become universe level. So, those are the scales chemical engineers are working, appreciate at least now. And lifelong you can have your entire research based on only molecules and Schrodinger equation that is your research area, that is all. And some people can concentrate only on the Thiele modulus. Okay? Thiele modulus means you know again uh, uh, interface gradients, interface gradients and all that. Some people can spend all their life only to develop Langmuir-Hinshelwood kinetics, that is all throughout their life. So, similarly some people can also concentrate only on the Ergun's equation. It seems Ergun's failed in the PhD examination uh, when he first told about that equation. And uh, that is what the story, someone was telling me, some UK professor, you know that Irgun has been failed because there is no theory in that, it is only empirical correlation. Correct, no? Irgun's equation is only empirical correlation where they have two terms, one is whisker term and the other one. So, it seems after uh, uh, doing that work and then he submitted that one as a PhD thesis, examiner came, threw that thesis out, no theory, only empirical, so no PhD for you and that is the equation what we have been using all the time I think on this planet wherever there is a packet bed. 
same story with monod's equation also that was also first not accepted uh, by the uh, journal i don't remember that journal it was rejected by the journal ha huh? monod's equation uh, no not monod's michaelis meton equation michaelis meton equation because that mechanism and all that many people did not know at that time so that equation also was that paper was rejected but afterwards it was accepted by some other journal and then you see everywhere without bio without michaelis meton equation and monod's equation both are similar no except one is for enzymes the other one is microorganisms both are same so i think now everyone talks about in fact entire biochemical engineering only two equations correct no what shall that yeah so only thing is you add some kind of uh, deactivation terms what is that uh, called deactivation or uh, inhibitions yeah inhibition terms and all that for the reaction to take place so these are the scales we are talking so when you talk about packet bed catalytic reactor design what level we are talking we are talking about only reactor level but before that and after that there are many many things okay so that is why that story i thought i will tell you so for packet bed uh, uh, reactor design alone again if you take okay i will let me concentrate only on that scale reactor scale how many ways you can design okay taking the entire system as simply plug flow reactor ideal plug flow nothing else or otherwise you can take this one as axial dispersion correct no because that is the nearest to non ideality okay and you can also take radial direction then it will become two dimensional model because variation along the length of the column variation along the yeah diameter of the column which is true many times because particularly when you have and we are talking about heat and mass transfer together it is not no more isothermal okay you are talking about energy balance and heat balance because temperature profiles as well as concentration concentration profiles both are important for us so radial direction and axial direction all this what we say is for homo pseudo homogeneous models what do you mean by pseudo homogeneous model i don't know whether you heard of this or not pseudo homogeneous model for packet bed reactor ha huh? yeah what is the meaning actually yeah Actual direction. What do you call that? Is pseudo. What is pseudo? Then? That is one dimensional. What you are saying is, if I say one dimensional, I am not bothering. I, I, I simply don't care what is happening around the cross section area. Okay. Yeah. What is the meaning of that? Right. Right. Equations are similar to homogeneous models, but what is the meaning? That is why you are calling pseudo homogeneous. In a packed bed, what is the imagination when you say pseudo homogeneous? What type of? No? Sir, uh, the situation is close to a hum- homogeneous situation since the single particle pack, is there's packing and not moving, and the liquid is uniformly distributed over the. So, yeah, very close. Then, 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 what do you call it? Is pseudo homogeneous? Because it's not actually homogeneous in say it's so. What is pseudo homogeneous? It's not actually. Uh, it's not the same phase. <laughs> But under what conditions we are saying that you know this can be pseudo homogeneous? Yeah. Yo, uh, I know uh, Anurag. Sir, Just I want you to think. That's all. It is not that I am trying to, because before I give the answer. Sir, take, uh, take the you know average throughout the break, but like using the porosity, we can take it as average and that the property is same throughout the bed. So yeah. So that means what is that you are trying to? Because there is a catalyst. Yeah, very close, but I think still you can tell. Okay, it is in a homogeneous system by taking the average property, not only of solid or of liquid. Simply, we don't feel the presence of solid. solids. Solid. Take the, as I said, bulk properties alone. When you take the bulk properties alone, and then try to find out the actual uh, uh, conversion along the length. If it is only one-dimensional model, that means simple plug flow. okay when you have that situation we say we have pseudo homogeneous which is very famous in industry because we don't have to bother about what is happening in the particles right how do you take care of that you already have that because if particle uh, whatever happening inside if you are not able to find out exactly 
right multiply by eta okay effectiveness factor so you are making converting that into anyway bulk rate so that is lot of amount i mean large amount of data available on pseudo homogeneous models that is one section so then you have you can also use the heterogeneous system heterogeneous model in heterogeneous models you always treat gas as gas or, or uh, fluid as fluid and solid as solid now you can imagine solid is one uh, part all uh, liquid is another part or fluid is another part now you have the concentration gradients in the liquid okay and uh, also in the solid if you again assume that at any cross section you have perfect mixing of the liquid then you have horizontal some con uh, concentration here and then when they touch the solid then you have the gradient inside the solid temperature also same thing okay that is in one direction maybe you can do this only in axial direction where the temperature and concentration gradients are existing within the particle so now what you have to do you have to first solve the concentration and temperature gradients within the particle then you come to the surface and if there is interfacial again again solve for surface and then uh, through the film to the bulk and now you come to the bulk write the equation in term based on bulk so you have to first solve the particles for temperature and concentration you know what are the equations you have to be used question number 3 number 3 or 4 ah question number 4 same equations so you will find out now t and ts depending on the boundary conditions then from ts to tb same thing c to cs and cs to cb now once you have cb that is where the plug flow is happening in the axial direction or you may have the generally we don't take axial mixing and all the, uh, there because the mathematics will be very 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 complicated so normally we assume that we have plug flow but consider the temperature and concentration gradients along the radial direction or uh, sorry along the axial direction and also for two dimensional radial direction but two dimensional heterogeneous models are very very rare there are few only few uh, academicians have tried to solve those equations so that means what when you are solving this uh, interfacial and intrafacial gradients you assume that at any cross section if you if you take one particle and then able to write the equations throughout it is same that is what is the assumption so along the radius so in the two dimensional model is that it is not uniform if i simply solve only one particle and then assume that throughout it is same it is not correct because there is also concentration and temperature gradients along the radial direction not only in this direction okay that means if i have the temperature uh, in the radial direction each particle will have a different kind of you know th th there is a temperature and concentration gradient there otherwise one line and over that we have actual mixing or you may have simply plug flow that's all what we have so these are the possibilities what we have and i will also uh, write that for your uh, notes otherwise i am sure you will not remember anything okay absolutely you don't remember because what is your interest is not coming in the examination because normally i don't give this kind of theory okay that is what your, your expectation but i can also give any time okay so that's why let us first write these models and then we have to go to the corresponding equations yeah classification of packed bed i am using packed bed only reactor models yeah so let me here we have pseudo yes yeah pseudo homogeneous models where we take tb equal to ts cb equal to cs then we have heterogeneous models oh 
C s. Good. If let me take one d first, one dimensional. Uh, the simplest one is ideal or okay, basic. Basic is plug flow. Because for packed beds, we know why we are taking for packed beds plug flow, right? Yeah, that is the one. And uh, okay, let me finish this first, then we can go to heterogeneous systems. Then in the same thing, I can also have basic plus axial mixing. It is still one dimensional. Correct? No. You have plug flow over that you have. Actual mixing, but go the all the changes only in the yeah along the length of the reactor. So this is the one. Then we have two D basic plug flow. Basic plus basic is plug flow plus uh, radial mixing. Okay. Basic plus radial mixing, right? Basic will tell you variations along the length and uh, radial mixing. Okay, so when you come here for heterogeneous, okay, let me also have this boundary somewhere there. Yeah, here you have basic plus interfacial gradients. Interfacial gradients. And in the next again one dimensional, this can be basic plus intra and interfacial. Okay, inter and inter and intra facial gradients. Good. So, here basic plus radial mixing also taken into account. Yeah. So, these are the general things what we do. Okay. And we are always that means we are always trying to tell that uh, in a cylindrical most of the time we use cylindrical part cylindrical uh, reactors. Okay. Packet beds. Why? Why don't we use uh, square cross section or rectangular cross section? The distribution is not proper. Distribution in the corners and all that you, know, you will not have proper flow. That is the reason. And because we have that symmetry, so that is why we will take only two dimensional, but we will not take this direction. Because cylindrical also will have r theta. No? Yeah, that one we will not take. Because of the symmetrical diffusion. Okay, good. So this is the one, uh, and uh, based on this, now uh, I'm not going to say anything about this except uh, maybe if there is time, I will write one or two equations. How do you write those equations? That's all. And those equations are already known to you because for separately plug flow you have to write, and separately for particles you have to write, and combining them is your TS boundary conditions. At boundary, what happens? Okay, all these equations are known to you. But the only thing is you have to bring them together. Maybe as an example, I will show you one uh, set of equations for solving. But in a way, for this course, you do not have to really worry because they are very, very complicated models. But course is not writing for the examinations. Course is, is a preparation for your future work. Okay. That is why most of the time, because you are not going for chemical engineering, you are not caring uh, the chemical engineering subjects. Okay. So, that is what unfortunate things that are happening you know, in this country, where we, we, we do something and then finally end up doing something else, totally something else, unconnected. Okay, yeah. So that is the reason why. But anyway, as teacher, I cannot assume that and then keep quiet because I, I don't have to teach you at all. If I assume that anyway, you are not interested in chemical engineering, so that means if I have that attitude, then you don't have to. I don't have to come to class. You don't have to come to class. Okay. So that is why I cannot assume that. So more amount of time we will try to spend on pseudo homogeneous models. And I will give you one or two set of equations for you. Unfortunately, in future, if you become a 
chemical engineer dealing with, at least you will remember that, oh, okay, I think I know this somewhere. You may not know who taught you, you may not know which subject, but still, memory, you know, sometimes it will come, and it's neural connections when suddenly something happens. So, a lot of chaotic theory also there in the brain, suddenly some connections will come. Okay? So, one of those connections may tell you that, oh, maybe I think I saw this kind of equation somewhere. So, that is the reason why we have to do this and a little bit of this. Okay. And before that, I have some other passion for my design. Without writing equations, how do I design the reactor? Okay. This is graphical design. You need some equations, but not solving differential equations. Here, differential equations automatically come because packet bed is a distributed parameter system. Okay. So, that means, the changes are occurring along the length. Okay. Whereas, if the same thing, if I want to write uh, design equations for mixed flow reactor, then you will not have differential equations, but you will have algebraic equations. That is the main difference between distributed parameter system and lumped parameter system. Okay. So, this I think you should know, each one of you, even if you are not becoming chemical engineer also, you have to know this system, I mean, know this, because that will automatically differentiate the type of mathematical equations, what you are trying to use. Okay? Right? Good. So, and with the minimum amount of uh, mathematics, how do we actually design? This is the gra graphical design, which I have done something. in the last semester, reactor theory when you are talking. Okay. So, our uh, reactions, we will say that we have irreversible, reversible exothermic and reversible endothermic. Here it does not matter, reversible, endo, exo both are here. Endo and exo. Okay, good. Yeah, and for reversible reaction, I have an equation. Uh, maybe reversible, irreversible reaction. Irreversible reactions, a general order, if I take, I will have minus R A equal to K C A to the power of n. As usual, I am going to take n equal to 1. So, this is minus R A equal to for n equal to 1. Okay. This becomes K 0 e power minus e by R T C A, which is nothing but C A naught into 1 minus X A. That means, I am also assuming epsilon a equal to 0. This again only to, to simplify the equation. Procedure is same, exactly same. Even if you put epsilon also, does not matter. Even if you put second order also, does not matter. I think it is the same procedure. Procedure is same. So, now, I have there are three things for me. I have minus r a, minus r a is one parameter, t is another parameter x a is another parameter. I have t x and minus r a. So, now I can make plots using any one of them on y, y and x and y, the other will be the other becomes yeah, yeah, uh, a parameter. Okay? These two are variables. Good. So, yeah, the other things are constant because k 0 I know frequency factor e r is ca, e r is the gas constant and c a naught also I know initially. So, when I write this equation in terms of uh, Okay, I may write here. Xa, I am solving equation two. This will be one minus minus R A e power minus e by R T no plus R T by K naught C A naught. So this is equation number three. Okay, now I can plot this particular uh, graph. Yeah, as yeah, the convenient way, as I told you, any two parameters can be 
chosen here third parameter will be automatically there okay so but most convenient for design is xa versus t and rate will be the parameter so it is a irreversible reaction so maximum conversion will be x equal to 1 x equal to 0 okay t we cannot say anything then uh, if i assume a particular uh, minus r a let us say 0.001 0.01 I mean, th th that values we cannot say but you have to start from lowest to the highest and you have to start for specific reaction some specific values this is only by talent error you should get otherwise there is no universal law there but anyway uh, minus r a equal to 0 means what equilibrium okay but here there is no equilibrium because it is irreversible reaction right it is not reversible reaction so that is the the other extreme right so but minus r a very very large value i can uh, start it's so, a very small value i can start i got go to large so then you will get curves like this all of them tending to one all of them tending to one this is for example minus r a equal to 1 10 100 log scale i am going 1000 10000 okay 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 they may touch here also yeah this is one set okay shall i stop here uh sekar run okay we'll stop <coughs>